Good morning, saints. How are you today? I hope things are well for you. I hope. Pray. System manipulation. Or manipulating the system. What is a system? What is a system? What is the definition of a system? Okay. First and foremost, the word system does not appear in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay. But again, system, a, a, what a system is, is obviously spoken of within the scripture. But there again, the word system itself does not appear. What is a system? Reading to you out of Webster's 1828 Dictionary. System. Number one. What is that? An assemblage of things adjusted into a regular whole or a whole plan or scheme consisting of many parts connected in such a manner as to create a chain of mutual dependencies. Dependence breeds subservience. Hmm. Anyway. Or a regular union of principles or parts forming one entire thing. Thus we say a system of logic. A system of philosophy, the wisdom of men. A system of government, capitalism, communism, Jesuitism, one and the same. <laughs> A system of principles, the solar system, the Copernican, 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 Copernican system, whatever that is, C-O-P-E-R-N-I-C-A-N system, a system of divinity, a system of law, a system of morality, a system of husbandry, a system of botany or of chemistry, C-H-I-M-I-S-T-R-Y. Two, regular method or order. Three, in music, an interval compounded or supposed to be compounded of several lesser intervals, as the fifth octave, etc., the elements of which are called diastems. D I A S T E M S. Music. So that's what a system is. A system is. Okay? Shock to the system, right? In this video, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read with me. Read with me. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. As you're reading along with me and you come to a part that you're not sure of context, pause this video and search the context on your own, okay? Be a Berean. Search this, uh, the scriptures daily whether these things be so, okay? Read along with me because as I always tell you, and I have to, okay? This goes faster than this sometimes and I will skip a groove, okay? So please, be a Berean. Read along with me in the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. We are going to be talking about the abuse thereof, or the system manipulation that people will utilize, do, in order to justify the end. Or how could we say the end justifies the means? Mm. Mm. Yes. I wonder who has that for a slogan or motto. I wonder. I wonder. 
Okay. We see this happen with lots of individuals and also with a lots of you know companies or whatnot, where there are systems in place to in in theory a system is to be a benefit, isn't it? Isn't it? In theory. But what happens is man will uh, mankind um, in unscrupulous ways will seek ways in order to utilize that system for their own benefit apart from the way it was designed to operate. Does that make sense? What am I talking about? What am I talking about? For example, in America, we have the welfare system. Okay? We have the food stamp system. We have the social security income system. Okay? Now, in and of themselves, the principles behind those systems to help those who are in need of such, in and of themselves, those systems ought to be a benefit. But what happens more often than not? There are those who will come along looking for loopholes, looking for ways to exploit that system to get something of their unscrupulous end, okay? The end justifies the means, okay? We see that a lot. We see a lot of people abusing the system, but or whatever system it is. But what happens is those who genuinely need those things are hampered by those who abuse the system and actually flourish therein, okay? I have known of individuals who are on welfare and on food stamps and yet live far above their means as if they were millionaires and use every little loophole to justify themselves and their expenditure, okay? Hence, when you got someone who is basically crippled, who can't do anything, who needs that, hence those who need it are hindered, hampered in obtaining those things because you got these people who abuse it. Okay? All right? There are many saints out there, and even these stupid Christians, who would be like, well, welfare this, welfare that, no, we shouldn't have. There are legitimate cases. I know of several brethren and sisters who are physically incapable, okay, who have um, physical and health issues that render them inoperative to do the things that most people are able to do. Hence, it is a necessity for them, okay? And you got some of these, these idiots who will say, oh, hey, you're not trusting the Lord, blah, blah, blah. The Lord can and does and will use these systems to aid those of his own sometimes, okay? You do have to put that into the equation. You would be ignorant, willfully, which is stupidity, by the way. You would be willfully ignorant to say that, no, God won't do that. No, he does for his own, okay? But then again, like I said, you have these people who will manipulate the system. Look for the loopholes, okay? and hence use the system as a weapon or as a means to an end. The end justifies the means, see. And that's what this video is addressing. And also too, here on YouTube, YouTube, okay, which has its uh, holy uh, and reverend community guidelines, right? Which they selectively enforce which they selectively enforce. And as I have in, encountered with some of these Christians, where they will go to the, use the YouTube system to try to get something off that they don't necessarily like. Okay? Never mind, it's like, okay, I don't like that, I'm going to go away from it, because hey, hey, I believe in freedom of speech. Okay? I might not like what you say, um, more often than not, if you're not a saint, I don't like what you say, okay? Uh, yeah, most likely, if you're not a saint, it's going to be contrary to the scripture. Hence, I'm not going to like what you say. But, you know what? I cannot watch that and not look at it, okay? All right? 
hey, I might not like you, I might think you're a devil, I might know you're a devil, but hey, you do have a right to do whatever you want to do, okay? You're going to pay for it eventually, yes, but you know, if you're going to talk your nonsense, I'm not going to have anything to do with it, but go, go ahead and talk your nonsense, go ahead, go ahead, and good luck at the Great White Throne there, okay? But here on YouTube, like I've said, I have encountered some of these Christians who, where you say something they don't like, they will report you and try to get you uh, things taken down and whatnot. This, uh, but see, they're using the system for their own personal agenda, not because it's a need or anything like that. And like I said, the uh, community guideline thing here on YouTube, they do selectively enforce okay they really do they really do so anyway that's kind of an introduction of what we're going to be talking about but now we are going to be focusing in on these Christians okay who will go to unscrupulous measures I like that word by the way uh, and do things contrary to the scriptures and use a system of whatever it is to get their own, to meet their own end, to get what they want. Okay? That's what we're going to be addressing. Let's begin this in Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 9. Luke chapter 16. One day I would love if the Lord would uh, let loose a... Uh, a expository video on Luke 16. That would be beautiful. Luke chapter 16, verses 1 on verse 9. And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. We've gone over this before, but we're going to go over this again today, okay, because uh, the Lord has allowed your servant quite a few videos to do. Okay, and to be quite honest with you, I can't remember in what videos we talked about a lot of these things. Okay, so. And he calleth him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. So the steward obviously was entrusted of things by his Lord. And the steward didn't do, do a good job at it at all. But we're going to see about the steward that his focus wasn't on serving his Lord, but it was his own backside. Okay? Check this out. When the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Stop. Stop. Look at that. Don't look at me, look at the scripture. I am resolved what to do. Now, after verse 3, after verse 3, let's read verse 3 again. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg I am ashamed. This steward was no more, not going to be a steward anymore. That was done. Okay? If this steward focus was on his Lord, on making him happy, then should not he have been, well, oh wow, I'm getting kicked out of the stewardship? Oh, Lord, look, okay, whatever you want to do, it's your stuff that you gave me to be a steward of. Thank you for I'm sorry I blew up. Please forgive me. I repent. Please, Lord, I want us to be on good ground one and another. I want us to be right. Okay, yeah, you're taking that away from me. Okay, I messed it up. Yes, I did. I messed it up. Forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me. Let not our relationship be hampered by this. Was that in this guy? Was that in this steward? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. After verse 3? Was that his response after verse 3? 
to like go to his Lord, try to make things right, and at least be like, look, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up. Forgive me, I repent. Okay, you do take, you know, like like Mephibosheth said to King David. It's like when uh, uh what was his name? Um Ziba lied to, uh, lied to King David. I think that was the guy's name. And Mephibosheth said, Hey, no, to let him let him have all, so long as you and me are on good standing ground. Okay? Alright? He didn't do that. He didn't do that. No. I am resolved what to do. So this is what I'm going to do. Get right with him, with his Lord? No. No. See, though he slay you, we are supposed to trust in the Lord. If he takes something away from you, there is a good reason. Okay? And nine times out of ten, it's because of something that you did. Okay? All right? I know that hurts, but that's just the fact of the matter. Okay? More often than not. But, like I said, this guy have even, even the thought in his heart to get right with the Lord? No. His own survival was first and foremost. I resolve what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So, what did this steward do? Let's see. So he called one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou, my Lord? So, there was debt there. And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write, 50. Not the whole amount, but just a little. Okay? Just a little. Just enough to appease. Not the whole amount, but just enough. Just a little. Okay? See, he was trying to appease, play both sides. See here, Lord? See, he was abusing that very system, if you will, of stewardship to cover his own backside. Because, okay, this is what he's doing. Okay? He's, tr he's trying to play both sides. He's trying to have his cake and eat it too. He's trying to utilize an option C. Okay? Look at it. Okay? And he said, a hundred measures, and he said unto him, take thy bill, sit down quickly and write 50. So see, here's the logic. Half goes on to the Lord and half goes to you. So see, I kind of make the Lord happy that, yeah, but also make you happy. See? He's making everybody happy. Instead of, as steward, look, I, I understand you got problems. Everybody's suffering. You do, oh my, oh Lord, a hundred measures of, what do you say? A hundred measures of oil. You can't pay it now? Fine. Come back when you have the full amount. Okay? Come back when you have the full amount. Okay? Or maybe they could have set up a payment plan. There is no evidence or proof that this was a payment plan. Not at all. Okay? Not at all. Let's continue. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. Okay? Again, giving some to his Lord, but also satisfying and pacifying the people. Okay? He was playing both sides. He was using that system of stewardship, as it were, to what? Cover his own backside. And look what the Lord says. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. See, what he did was underhanded. His main concern was his own rear end. Not his Lord. Okay? Alright? We as saints, our number one concern, our number one, our all, is our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? We, this is a cliche saying, but I have to say it. We are second. He must increase. I must decrease. And in our decreasing... He fills us with Him. Hence, He is glorified. 
Okay? That was not what was in the store. And the Lord's like, you did pretty good. Let's look. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Wiser than the children of light? How so? A saints ought not to resort to such manipulative tactics and abuse of a system that they were entrusted with. Hence, a earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom in playing both sides, trying to make both sides happy when the Lord was owed a specific amount. Okay? There is no evidence in this context that they this was, well, they established a, a payment plan. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was to pacify. He was playing both sides in order to what? Protect his rear end. The end justified the means. See? Okay? This is a dangerous thing. And you and I as saints, in this instruction and in righteousness, we got to be careful. Let's continue. And you want proof? Let's, let's keep reading. And I say unto you, who is he talking to? Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Now devils will come to that. Well, there's a mammon of righteousness. No, there isn't. And who is he addressing? Okay, who is he addressing in this parable? He is addressing the type of person, spiritual body, that would resort to these kind of manipulative tactics. Okay? That's what he, who, what, and who he is addressing with this. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fall, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Yeah, the world loves his own. So what is he saying? The unjust steward was of the world. He didn't care at heart. He didn't care for the things of his Lord. He cared about his position of prominence, but he didn't care about his Lord. All he cared about was, I, 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 I me, 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 me. That's all he was about. And the Lord's like, bravo, hey, you did pretty good. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you don't care about me. You care about your own backside. Go ahead. Make friends with these guys. Why? So they can take care of you. Love not the world, but the things of the world. For whosoever loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And here's the icing on the cake to that. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Let's read on to verse 15 now. Okay? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? At the root of the matter, at the root of the matter here, what was the unjust steward's main issue, as it were. Luke chapter 12, just one verse. Luke chapter 12, verse 15, just one verse. And he said unto them, don't look at me, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Um, Psalm 10. Psalm 10. One verse. Psalm 10. I can hear you devils. So, like, well, Paul talks about coveting spiritual gifts so that the Lord may be glorified. See, we are to covet uh, earnestly spiritual gifts, yes. 
Yes, and not the stupid charismatic stuff, the lies that they talk about. The apostolic sign gifts are not today. Period. Okay? But, you know, to, you know, to speak the word, to be a minister or whatever, or whatever capacity in the ministry of reconciliation, whatever. Okay, yes. But see, why are we coveting these spirit, spiritual gifts? So that the Lord may be glorified. See, coveting to glorify, I, 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 me, me, me. Psalm 10, just one verse. Ah, you know what, just, just for, if I can get there. <laughs> Okay, but why don't we just read from verses 1 on to verse 3 in Psalm 10, okay? Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous. Whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhor means to have extreme hate for something. We are to abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. See, if you want from the Lord for Him to be glorified, that's one thing. But see, you got to be careful with that because what happens is when seeking the Lord for those things, you can run into the trap of glorifying yourself through the Lord, not glorifying the Lord through yourself. See, that's a fine line that unfortunately a lot of people have blurred. Okay? My ministry, my this, I this, I this. Got to watch out for that. But now, okay, let's continue here. Oh, 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 oh and I wrote down one more thing. John 12, 43. John 12, verse 43. For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. And when you read here about the unjust steward, whose praises did he love more? Uh, you look at verses 8 and 9. I think that tells you who, where his heart was for. Okay? Verses 13 on verse 15 now, Luke 16. No servant can serve two masters. For those of you, it's like, well, there's a good mammon, right? There's a righteous mammon. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, love the other, or else he will hold to the one, and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It's black or white. Either or. Dude, listen to me. There is no middle ground. Okay? There is no option C when it comes to these things. You're either or. Either or. Black or white. It's simple. A or B. Okay? But what happened? They want their cake and eat it too. And because they are the object of their own desire, the ends justify the means. And they, whatever system they can get their hands on to reach that end, whatever they have to do, they will do in order to meet that end. System manipulation. I liken it onto whoredom. Whoredom. These people who will, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, just for a moment, as soon as long as it suits me. That's whoredom. That's whoredom. You're not being Christ-like. You're acting like your mother. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? Let's continue. And the Pharisees also who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, this is exactly what we're talking about today. Ye are they which justify yourselves for men. But God knoweth your hearts. See, you read Jeremiah. 
What is that, Jeremiah 17? Uh, hold, on, hold your place here instead of misquoting. Um, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Yes. 9 and 10. Well, while we're here, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And let's go to, while we're here, let's go to Proverbs, uh, what is it, uh, uh, 28, 28. Proverbs 28, or might be one second. Sorry about that. Proverbs 28, verse 26. I was looking right at it. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, and the fool says in his heart there is no God. Yeah. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Now, in that context, wisely is a fear of the Lord. But here, what our Lord was talking about in this parable of the unjust steward, about how he did wisely, he did wisely according to the world. He made sure that he had his escape route. He made sure that he covered his own end instead of going to the Lord. We don't know if the Lord would have forgiven him and reinstated him. We don't know. It is pretty cut and dry, verse 2 in uh, Luke 16. And he called him and said unto him, How is it? that I hear this of thee. Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. That's pretty cut and dry, set in stone sounding. We don't really know, but it is safe to assume that. And <laughs> look at how he behaved himself. Abusing that very system which he was being taken away from. I wonder why. Yeah. Verse 15 again. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. Yeah, he sure does. Yeah. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 on to verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 on to verse 31. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wise wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. There are those out there, when you come to verse 29 and 30, uh, that will teach you and try to say, well, if you're married, act as if you're not married. No. No, that's not what that's talking about. They will come to this to justify, well, I'm married, but there it says to, I have a wife, but to, like, uh, what does it say? Um... Uh, that both they that have wives be as though they had none. So, okay, I can neglect my wife, not honor my wife, not give her due benevolence, okay, <laughs> all right? And even I can go and have an affair because, hey, I'm it says right there, I'm, I'm supposed to live as though I don't have... No, no, that's not what that's talking about, okay? This is the mind, the level of the mind of these devils that they will go to to justify themselves. Okay? This is the level that these, I'm being polite, these idiots will go to to justify themselves. Okay? What is this talking about? We have to say this now. Verse 32. But I will have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Verse 33. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife, and vice versa. See, that's what that's talking about. What he's referring to is, you have a wife. 
Okay? Yes, you do. An unmarried person can put all their time onto the Lord. But a married person, you're both one flesh. You know, you got to do things. Up, uh, you got to look to things in the world sometimes, you know. You need to eat. Okay? You need to have clothes. Having a roof over your head is a good thing. Having transportation is a good thing. Okay? Food raining, that kind of stuff. Okay? So what Paul is saying is, as husband and wife, okay, what he's saying is, make sure your attention is on the Lord. Because, let's go down uh, to verse, well, let's keep reading, to verse 35. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that, he may, that she, excuse me, may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. See, what's being talked about in verses 29 and on to verse 31 is to try to avoid and to be devoid of distraction. But what happens? We addressed this in the previous video with fretting. Satan will come along, stuff will come up that will get your attention away from the Lord and look to around you. Okay? And Paul would have us to be without distraction. Okay? That's what that's talking about. That's what that's talking about. So watch out for these devils who will come to verses like this and try to justify sin. Okay? It's not what he's talking about there. But we went through all that especially for verse 31. And they that use this world as not abusing it. Don't love the things of the world. Okay? There are things in the world that are needful. Yes. Food. Raiment. Yes. A roof over the head is quite a good thing. Yes. Whether it's uh, neighbors upstairs who like to have wrestling matches at night, or whether it's a tent covering, or whether whatever it is, it's a good thing to have, okay? All right? And they that use this world as not abusing it, caught up in it, for the fashion of this world passeth. Should we go to, I think we should. I think we should now go to 1 John chapter 2. I think we should with this because we've mentioned that verses 15 on to verse 17, okay? Let's read uh, while we're in 1 Corinthians 7. Let's read that while well, verse 31 again. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. How many of these Christians abuse the world? And get caught up in it. First John two fifteen and on to seventeen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, what does it begin with? The lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay? Right? And see, the unjust steward used the system of stewardship to justify the end. The, the end justifies the means. That's what he did. And the Lord was not for it, obviously. Obviously. 1 Corinthians, while we're here, chapter 6. We're going to read verses 1 on verse 10. You know, I am so sick of these Christians. Well, I'm not judging these people. I, I can't judge. Who are we to judge? We have a perfect standard. The authorized version. And because we are saints, saved, born again, converted, we have the authorized version. We have a perfect standard on which to first judge ourselves and judge others. 
And when you don't judge yourself and judge others according to this, what happens? You become whores. And you will be commit whoredoms with all kinds of devils who say, I'm a Christian! This is why I am vehemently against that term, Christian. And that is why I refuse, refuse the label Christian, saint of the Church of God. Thank you. Okay? But here's the, here's the thing about judging. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 on verse 10. And, and here again, okay? Saints who have little squabbles that ought to be brought before fellow brethren, what are they doing? Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Go to the lost world to settle your disputes rather than brethren, fellow saints of the church of God. Do ye not know that the saints, saved people, shall judge the world? Yeah. And how do we judge the world? By what standard? The authorized version. Okay. Watch out for these Christians. It's like, well, I'm not judging. Nobody can judge me but God. God does judge you through the scriptures. And we who are his ambassadors are to judge ourselves, one another, and you according to the standard. Look at me. Listen to me. Again, any putts out there, and I'm being polite. I, I've, I've had it up to here. I've had it up to here with these Christians. Don't judge. Don't judge. You go to hell. You go to hell. What fellowship hath light with darkness? Huh? What, uh, what concord hath Christ with Belial? Huh? Huh? And then because these guys aren't judging, you know, we love everybody. You, you see the whoredom that they're committing by bringing everyone in always. Uh, crazy. Anybody who throws at you, don't judge. Every single time without exception. They're seeking to justify sin and themselves. Every single time, without exception. Watch out for those people. Please. Okay? But let's continue. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? I I I I I I got I I I've seen. I'm seeing way too much of this. Well, I, I'm not going to judge whether or not he's saved. What's wrong with you? Is the reason why you're not going to do that because you're not saved yourself? Okay? Maybe that's why you twits. It's like, well, I'm not going to judge their salvation. You, we're supposed to. We're supposed to. Okay? Uh, um, <laughs> And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? Well, salvation isn't a small matter. You're right. You're right. But, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 1 on verse 2, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What does that mean? Paul wanted to know who was truly saved. That's what he's talking about. You read Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 21. Okay? People who have been crucified with Christ. Saved people. Okay? Dead to the world, dead to themselves. Paul was looking for who was saved. Who was truly saved? How do you do that unless you judge? Huh? Crazy. Crazy. But see... That shows the lack of discernment in Christianity today. It really does. It really does. 
the the sm the simplest, smallest things of discernment are not there in these Christians. They're not. Not in all of them. Unfortunately, there are saints out there who will not get rid of the term Christian. But they're saints. That's their problem. That's between them and the Lord. Okay? Does that mean they're going to go to hell if you're a saint and you want to call yourself a Christian? No. No. But what is a Christian today? And you're going to spend an hour trying to, dis to, to explain to someone why you're a real one and everybody else is not? Cut it. Drop it. Go on to the next one, bro. Sister, come on. But it shows the lack and level of discernment that is not there in these Christians. That's why these idiots, these devils, can deceive people in the manner they are doing. Okay? Let's continue. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. <laughs> Look at this. I speak to your shame. Think about this, people. Brethren, uh, and whoever you are watching, you got to you run into these Christians. We're not judging you. I can't judge you. I can't judge whether this or that. Speak to your shame. Shame on you. We have a perfect standard. We have a perfect standard. We judge ourselves. Yes. Okay? Self-examination, which ought to be done every day, thank you. But we are to judge others with this. And if they speak not to the uh, word or the testimony... That is because there is no light in them. Okay? People. Let's see. The time we live in. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother. And that before the unbelievers. So saints going to the system of a Jesuit-controlled, Masonic-created government. Do you think our Father Jesus Christ um, enjoys this thing which is called Christianity. Do you think it is something that he smiles upon? Now therefore there is, verse 7, Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a reference unto the spiritual, not the physical kingdom of heaven. Okay? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, self, nor idolaters. <laughs> you know, People like, idolatry is here. I'm going to idolize this, make an idol out of that. Yes, that is. But remember, idolatry really begins with what? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. Like you say to every atheist you run into. You lie and your breast stink. You believe in a god yourself. You are your own idol. Okay? But, okay? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God spiritual. Okay? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor abusers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, 
I, I, I'm sorry, I got LGBTQ cross dressing Christians. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> LGBTQ cross dressing Christians. <laughs> That's not funny. But see, like I was telling you, the level of discernment of people today, I'm not judging them. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Effeminate. Men acting like women. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Sodomites. Nor thieves. You know, boot the door and climb up some other way. Nor covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Nor drunkards, drunk with the wine from Mystery Babylon. Nor revilers. You're judging people. You're evil. I'm going to report you. Okay. <laughs> Nor extortioners. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. Which is spiritual in this context. Let's read verse 11. Seeing who this is all addressed to. And such were some of you. But ye are washed. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the, of the Lord Jesus. And by the capital S spirit of our God. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. So he's talking on to saved people. And in verses 9 and 10. He's making reference of those who say they are. But they ain't. So see. We are to judge, and among the saints, there is to be a system there, instead of us going to the law for matters that we ought to go to the saints for. That's unheard of of today, isn't it? It is. It is. But see, we are to, we are going to judge angels, and see, the saints have a perfect standard for judgment. Okay? All right? Now, there might be some of you out there be screaming, well, what about Romans 13? What about Romans 13? Let's go to Romans 13. Okay? And Masonic infiltrators who want to, to this day, defend America and try to, try to tell you that America might uh, be revived or there's still hope for America. Masonic infiltrators. Yeah. Not Jesuits, but Masons, Freemasons. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but Romans 13, verses 1 on verse 6. Okay? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are ordained, the powers that be are ordained of God. But wait a minute, we have the prince of the power of the air. In our governments, those that are ordained are ordained of God, whether it is for the good of the populace or for judgment against them. Okay? The Jesuit order has selected for America um, uh, that twit Biden and his henchwoman, um, Kamala Harris. Okay? And who they're going to select, whether it's going to be DeSantis or it's going to be Trump, who knows, who knows, who knows. Okay, but see, they are in power as judgment upon America. Okay, the Lord put them there, allowed them there for judgment. Okay, let's keep reading. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they shall receive, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not are not a terror to good works. Good works. Well, what are those good works? Being ambassadors for Christ. Living our life according to the scriptures. Preaching the gospel. Okay? Helping the saints. Helping others. That kind of thing. Those are the good works. Okay? Abiding by the law. Okay? Don't speed. Okay? Don't steal. 
don't kill. Okay? That kind of stuff. Okay? Alright? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Do what the law says. Okay? Do what the law says. It's very simple. Okay? But as this, as we are talking about, who knows the law be better than anyone? Criminals! Criminals do. I used to know tons of criminals. And they knew the law very well. Rather, they knew the law so they could look for loopholes and manipulate the system. The end justifies the means. See? Okay? Criminals know the law very well. Criminals know the law better than we saints who walk according to a perfect standard. That our Lord mentioned that. Okay? The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. See, we have the Lord within us. And He, the Lord, will have us to walk according to the perfect standard KJV. Okay? Great channel. Beloved brother, check out his stuff. A true enemy of the Vatican. Love you, brother. But we have a standard that we walk by. Okay? The authorized version. Hence, when we do according to the scripture, we are doing what is right. Hence, <laughs> according to that, well, they, the government, is not to be a terror unto us because we are doing the good works. What the Lord says. Okay? All right? Let's continue. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay? You steal something from a store, that's evil. Okay? You bludgeon someone with a baseball bat, that's evil. Okay? You get drunk and then decide to go run people over in a car, that's evil. Okay? You commit adultery on your wife. That's evil. Under the law, under the Old Testament, you should have been killed. Today, legally, there are great repercussions for that. Okay? All right? And see, according to Scripture, we who are saved, who have the Lord in us, already would adhere to such principles. But see, Christians, who don't judge anything. You see? Let's continue. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Okay? So, a righteous government will not harm you, saint, for doing what is good. And we do what is good when we walk and live our lives according to the scriptures. Okay? Okay? But when we start letting the world in, and then we go in outside of that, then we look to other systems to justify our end. The end justifies the means. Okay? This is talking about a righteous government. Okay? And also in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2 talks about this. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 on to verse 17. Okay? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. And for the praise of them that do well. I had I remember when very early in my walk with the Lord when I was a babe, I had some woman tell me, you know, well, you can't be a preacher unless you go to a college. And she quoted that from a Bible, of course, not the scriptures. But more on that in a minute, okay? Okay. 
For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, which too many Christians do, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. And that brotherhood is not the Masonic brotherhood, by the way. He does, okay? So again, Peter is saying basically the same thing that Paul was saying, okay? But see, what happens is when you have a Masonic Jesuit government that does things contrary to Scripture, such as, such as, the, uh, Exodus, I almost said Ezekiel, Exodus 20, just one verse. Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Well, it actually means murder. Shut up. Shut up. Thou shalt not kill. What is abortion? You're killing a child. Hmm? Thou shalt not kill. Yet, daily, still in America, there are abortions that happen every day. Abortions. Murder. Killing. Okay? Also, <laughs> also, but see, here in America, it's been left up to the states. So, in reality, nothing really has changed. They say that Roe versus Wade was overturned, but yet people can still kill their children if they choose to. Okay? It depends on the state. Okay? Hence, pitting the states against each other. Okay? Them Jesuits, you've got to hand it to them. They know how to destroy a nation. Look at America, and I rest my case. Okay? Here's another one that is very pertinent for us today. Uh, Deuteronomy 22... Okay. <laughs> LGBTQ cross-dressing Christians defending LGBTQ and cross-dressing. But yet these Christians aren't going to judge those people and think they're safe. Why? Because these LGBTQ cross-dressing Christians they think that they have power. Well, this is their hour in the power of darkness, isn't it? Yes. But, here again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. This has not changed, by the way. You know, rightly dividing the word of truth. How many Christians do that? Okay. How many? Practically none. You know, there are some King James Bible lawyer and Christians that do, praise the Lord, rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Praise the Lord. There are some King James Bible believing Christians that do. Even some of these others that don't use the scriptures even attempt to rightly divide the word of truth. If you can at least start with that, that is better than saying that the whole thing blends together. Okay? This is not undone anywhere in the New Testament. Hence, this is still binding. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so, do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. And the, the, today, the, they say, well, love, love. Your love is hatred. Your love is cheering someone on as they fall off of a cliff headlong to their death. That's hate. Love is, whoa, dude, stop. Stop. You're doing evil. Stop. Okay? But today, today, huh? You dare say to some of these devils that, hey, guess what? There's two genders. Hey, guess what? God hates sodomy. He can save you from that, but he hates what you're doing. You're, dressing, you're a guy dressing up as a woman. God hates that. He has not undone that anywhere in Scripture. The only thing you're doing is trying to twist it to justify your sin. The Masonic Jesuit, this is a Jesuit country. Okay? Don't believe some of these King James Bible even Christians, who I believe are Masonic, 
trying to tell you that it's not. America is in the pocket of the Vatican. The only reason why America hasn't been destroyed is because of the saints. You see that? You can't really see it. The Declaration of Independence, it's a Masonic document. Okay? It is. Our founding fathers, I don't care how you want to justify it. Our founding fathers here in America, the majority of them were Freemasons. It's a Masonic document. It's a Masonic document. Okay? All right? But if you go about love, loving these people, like, look, do, okay? You're justifying <laughs> dressing up as a woman and saying, God, well, love, you can't judge me. Dude, you are damning yourself to hell. Okay? God does not approve of what you're doing. God hates what you're doing. He can and will save you from that. Not at gunpoint. Okay? Not at gunpoint. Look, I used to be a sodomite. The Lord freed me from that when he saved me. He can do the same for you. But it's not at gunpoint. But see, you offend one of these guys. Oh, boy. And they will use the system to try to get you. But see, America, God says, not undone today, that a man shall not wear that which pertaineth to a woman, nor a woman wear a man's garment. It's an abomination. But our government defends it and calls us, who's like, hey, guys, that's evil. Stop that. They persecute us. We're the bad guys. And also, here's one, too, that uh, got a lot of people, not just saints, in trouble. Um, especially with the psychological operation that they pulled a couple of years ago. In Leviticus chapter 13, Okay, Leviticus chapter 13, and they call it medical misinformation. This is the perfect standard, what God said. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean unclean a couple years ago the Jesuit order instituted a very successful psychological operation with the use of a um, of a bio weapon that they created uh, they were telling people to do something contrary to scripture and suffocate yourself weren't they And anyone who had said, wait a second, this says to do this so you can breathe, okay? And then people who didn't like the truth did what? Used the system to attack those who stood for the truth. And that's happening in great multitudes today. Okay? Okay? But what, what's, what ultimately is, what ultimately is, has happened? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. Excuse me. The scriptures will. Isaiah 5, 20 on verse 23. You knew this was coming. Excuse me. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify, don't look at me, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. That's happening today. 
And that's happening today by many people using and abusing, manipulating these systems that in theory are there for a benefit, but a lot of people have figured out little loopholes to, to the end justifies the means, to use them for their own personal gain. And hence, for those who actually need these things, make it almost impossible. Thanks. And also, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Where are we? I just lost my place. I just lost my place. Excuse me. Uh, Romans. <laughs> one moment, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verses. I wrote it out the, the lower. But these weren't in what, what I sent you guys. Romans chapter 1. Verses 28 down to verse 32. Come on, fingers work with me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. Justifying debate, huh? Of course you are, because you're all devils. Yes. Oh. Did he just? Yes, I did. You see, because I have a perfect standard. And we're supposed to judge you idiots. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all uncleanness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, Debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters. <laughs> it's not funny. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, do not do uh, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. The end justifies the means. So when you have a government that is calling evil good and good evil, see, when you're in a predicament like that, what do you do? What do you do? Okay? What do you do? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But in Acts chapter 5, in Acts chapter 5, verses 29 on verse 33, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew on a, and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. They were telling these you know, the apostles not to speak of Jesus, to preach the truth. Today, today, we can still speak of the true Jesus. But the system is as such that if someone doesn't like the real Jesus it favors them more than it favors us and they know that and they just like the whore who uses the beast will use that system to silence those who tell the truth When it comes to something that God specifically says is evil and your government says it's good, what do you go with? Hmm? Our God says, thou shalt not kill. But yet you decide to fornicate and make that woman with child so you're going to go kill the child because you don't want to be a father or a mother. That's evil. That's evil. 
You're dressing up, you're a man dressing up as a woman. God calls it an abomination. He has not changed that. Okay? That has not changed. You know your Monty Python that you love so much? That was an abomination. It's funny. Ha 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 ha. The kids in the hall. Saturday Night Live. Right? It's abomination. God can deliver you from that. God can save you out of that. Do you want to? God said, you're going to put a, a, put a covering on? Cover your lip. Threats with jail? Fines into the thousands? Look, remember what happened in Australia? If they didn't turn it up here? God said, okay, if you're going to put, okay, fine. Right here. But no, if you don't do this, evil. Evil. And see, this is their hour in the power of darkness. They are increasing. We are decreasing. Okay? Like that bumper sticker that my wife's friend said that she saw. That the bumper sticker was, uh, once the rapture happens, the world will be ours. Once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, the world will be in Satan's hand as a form of judgment for about seven years. So yeah, after we are caught up, the world will be yours. Because he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Okay? And, and, and also, too, you know, you, you, some of you guys would be like, well, what about 1 Timothy 2? 1 and 2. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority. Why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That we may live our life according to the scriptures as ambassador for Christ. That's why. But our government is controlled by the Jesuits. So are we praying for uh, Kamala and Joe? No. What are we praying for? Lord, keep this devil government off of us, please, so that we may do what you want us to do. Okay? All right? People, look. It, w it would be great if America could come back from something. But it's not going to happen. I'm speaking of my nation because I'm an American. Wherever you are is wherever you are. Okay? You're just as bad, not as worse, but just as bad as we are. We're, we're pretty bad. America is like probably the worst. Some will argue that uh, France or England or even Australia. Uh, no, I'm sure uh, you uh, uh, beloved Englishmen will say, yeah, you Americans are the worst. And hey, are we worse than you Englishmen? Yes, we are. America is worse than you. There you go. <laughs> That's not saying that much, though, man. Okay? All right? But, see, this is you pray that we may be able to do the work of the Lord without an oppressive government. But guess what, Jack? We have an oppressive government. We have an oppressive government. We have people within this government who will look for the loophole and exploit, misuse, manipulate the system because the end justifies the means. They will be like the unjust steward having their own rear end in their sights and not the things of the Lord. Let's look at some examples of this. Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4 of, the, of a system being abused or people using a system of sorts uh, to justify uh, the end justifies the means. Okay? Ezra 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now, what we're looking at here in Ezra, and also we're going to look at in Nehemiah. Okay? But check this out. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity, Israel, builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. 
Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Now these are infiltrators for our instruction and righteousness. This stuff happens today. But say you have see the saints out there working, uh, doing the good works of the Lord, living as in examples, living according to the scriptures, preaching the gospel. Not to stay saved or be saved, none of that nonsense. No, but we are have been saved and called on to good works, okay? So you get these infiltrators, these Jesuit coadjutors coming along saying, let us build with you. We're Christians too. For we seek your God as ye do. I'm not a Christian, by the way. I'm a saint of the Church of the Living God. Okay? You take your Christianity and go off someplace. Okay? And we sacrifice unto him since the days of Azar Hadan, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. Okay? But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. See, these guys are like, well, hey, we're like you. Uh, no, you do not serve my God. I serve one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay, who dwells within me. You serve a trinity. That's Satan. Okay? Alright? You and I don't serve the same God. No. No. You, you go on. You go off someplace. Okay? You go away. Alright? We don't worship the same God. Okay? You are of your father the devil. Alright? Go away. Then, verse 4, then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. See that happening all the time. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. Oh, see that going on on YouTube all the time, don't you? All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia, and in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So these infiltrators, we will say, finally wrote letters, the system, using the system. They went to King Ahasuerus. And now we're going to skip a little onto verses 11 onto the close of the chapter. This is a copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes, the king, thy servants, the men on this side the river, and at such a time. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and bad, and the bad city, the city of the great king, and they call it the bad city. Okay, They're going to the system to try to get to meet their end. The end justifies the means, see? Okay? And have set up walls thereof and joined the foundations. Be it known now unto the king that if this city be builded again, if, excuse me, if this city be builded, excuse me, and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom and so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. Hey, if this place gets built, your money may be affected, huh? And they were under judgment still. The Jews were. Even though they were uh, let go in, of captivity to come back here, okay? Let's continue. Now because we have maintenance from the king's palace. Mwah, 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 mwah. Got a little brown on the nose there, huh? That's what happens. See, that's the consequence of when you got these guys who are going to use the system and manipulate it to attack you. They usually end up getting brown on their nose and their breast sticking like dung. Shame on y'all. Shame on y'all. And it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor. 
Therefore have we sent and certified the king, that search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers. So shalt thou find in the book of the records, and know that this city is a rebellious city, and hurtful unto kings and, pro uh, kings and provinces, and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time. For which cause was this city destroyed? We certify the king that if this city be builded again, and the walls there have set up, by this means thou shalt have no portion on this side the river. Okay? So, see, they were using the system to attack what God had, had ordained. See? Now, see, there are times when we, we go to the world for worldly things. Yes. Yes. But, like I said again, scripturally, amongst saved people, okay, amongst saved people, when it comes to small matters, Go to each other. Go to the saints. The bigger things, there are courts for a reason. There are courts for a reason. I'm not saying that when something big happens and you're a saint, that you shouldn't go to the law for at all. I'm not saying that. What we are addressing is when people go to that to abuse it, to satisfy their own covetousness and their own lusts and stuff like that. And also to do contrary to God. That's what we are talking about. Let me clarify that, okay? Let's continue. Then sent the king an answer unto Rehum the chancellor, and Shimshai the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwelt in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace, and at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me, and I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river, and toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that the city be not builded, until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? So they got it. They used that system, they used this thing in order to get their end, to meet their end. To stop the Jews who when they wanted to infiltrate said, no, get out of here, you're not of us. And they, they caused all these problems. And then they go to the, through the system to stop them. Now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste. Right away. It's like, oh, here we go. Here we go. The government said you can't do this. The king said you can't do this. Yeah. And their, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. They had the government on their side. Then ceased the work of the house of God which was in Jerusalem. So it ceased until the sec, unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Hmm. But see, here's the problem. They got a temporary victory. They sure did. And see, that's the thing. See, the devil will get victories. But he's going to lose the war. These devils may get a victory over us saints. But just remember, the God we serve is mighty. The God they serve is a created being, Satan. Our God wins. But Satan will be allowed to get these little victories. He will be. Things like that will happen. Ezra 5.1 Then the prophets, Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Edio, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Jerusalem, that were in Judah and Jerusalem, in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Haggai. Haggai, chapter 1. 
Haggai. Don't worry, we're not going to read the whole thing, even though we should. But we're not going to. Haggai. Chapter 1. Come on, Frank. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Haggai, chapter 1, verses 3. On to verse 8. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time? Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lieth waste. And this house lie waste. Excuse me. See, are you reading along with me? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you. But there is none warm, and he that earneth wages, earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Verse 8. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified. Saith the Lord. But, but, but the king said we can't do that. Uh, God's saying to him, uh, Hey, you wonder why things ain't going good for you? Well, the king said, Who, Who's your king? Huh? We have no king but Caesar, right? See, when you play the whore, and use the system to meet your unscrupulous little end that you want, devil. You have no... I mean, you're, it's obvious who your father is. Okay? And let's skip a little and go to verses 13 and 15. On the 15. Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's message unto the people, saying... I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shalathiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, in the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. But, but the king said not to. God says, I am with you. I am with you. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Huh? Are you afraid of a man? Huh? They got the arm of the law. We have the Lord. We have the Lord. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 on verse 10. Zechariah 4, 6 on verse 10. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Oh, what is this mountain? A big mountain like an obstacle like the king said you can't do it. But the true king of kings, lord of lords, says, uh, no, no, no. Okay? Here's an incident where a mountain is a reference onto a person, perhaps the king, who uh, said to them originally, no, you can't do it, which we already looked at. Okay? Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone, Thereof with shouting, shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. And what is grace? It's favor, more or less. Okay? Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. 
They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. The eyes of the Lord that run to and, uh, to and fro through the earth. Not, you know, like Satan who walks uh, to and fro as in Job. Okay, be careful because uh, people, especially atheists, might bring that up as a contradiction. So be aware of that, okay? So what happened to these guys inevitably who used the system and got a temporary victory? Oh, the Lord overturned it, didn't he? Go ahead to Nehemiah. Go to Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. Verses 1 on verse 6. Now, they were now using threats of the system. If you don't do this, I'm going to report you. If you keep that up, I'm going to turn you into the police. If you don't put that up, I'm going to call the guys and you're going to be arrested and fined. If you dare tell, hey, look, you don't want to hear the truth, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. But there are others out there who need to hear the truth. You're going to try to prevent the truth from being told about people, about um, that there are only two genders. And that what you're doing is an abomination unto the Lord. And that he can save you from that. Yeah. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which shall burn? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey to the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders, getting in the way of the Lord. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. Yes. And let's now look at Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 9. Now, now here we see, we've covered this before, but we're covering it again today. Here we see manipulation personified. Here is one of the best scriptural examples of someone trying to use manipulation, manipulative tactics here in Nehemiah. And also the threat of using the system. Okay, this is very significant. Check this out. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Gisham, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Gisham sent unto me, saying, Come, <laughs> let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ano." But they thought to do me mischief. Oh yeah. Come, come on, let's come on, let's have a conversation. Let's talk. Uh what fellowship hath light with darkness? Huh? Okay. What uh, what fellowship hath on uh, righteousness with unrighteousness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Okay? No. No. It's not gonna happen. Okay? A distraction. It's like, come on, let's talk. We just want to talk to you. Let's talk. Verse 3. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work. It's like, I'm busy. Okay, I got tracks to go uh, to do. I got to go meet someone at 5 o'clock. Uh, you know, I got a brother or a sister I got to call. Okay, i uh, going to have a Skype thing going on. Okay, got my wife and I, we got some stuff we're going to go through with the scriptures ourselves. Okay. We're, we're busy doing what the Lord will have us to do. Okay? 
the enemies that mocked us and despised us, that tried to infiltrate, but got made known, fingered. It's like, come on, we just want to talk. What's wrong with talking? Everything. Especially when we both know who each other serve. Okay? Especially. It's vain. It's vain. Okay? And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after the sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Like, dude, leave, you're getting nowhere. Now check what, out, what happens. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner, the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. Oh boy. Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it. Oh, the, and this manipulation tactic has been used on me, on so many other people. Okay, it's, it's, uh, it is a form of gaslighting in a way, but not really. But yet, I mean, just check it out. Okay, we just want to talk. We just, let's have a civil conversation. And what was the goal all along? Wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, that, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Now the king, we're going to tell the king on you. We're going to report you. We're going to call the cops on you. Okay? <laughs> you can't talk about the Lord around here. You the owner? You the man? No? You just, oh, okay, thanks. Thank you. I'll, I'll take that under advisement. The owner or somebody comes around. Uh, don't do that or we're going to call the cops. You're the owner, huh? Or the manager? Okay. See you later. Go to the property property line or something, and then they hand out your tracks. <laughs> Say, hey, you own this? I'm gonna go. Do you own this? No. Okay. Fine. Hey, I'm not on your property, am I? Hey, can I give you a track? Can I get? You want it here? Lay here. Can we talk? Yeah. Am I on your property, pal? No. Not like I've not encountered that before. <laughs> okay. And other brethren have. But it's like, we're going to call, we're going to tell the king on you. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Come on, let's talk. So they mocked them, did everything to get in the way, manipulating them, using psychological uh, tactics, uh, manipulation tactics on them, and then they have the nerve. Let's talk. <laughs> then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. In other words, uh, dude, you're crazy. For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hand shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. See, and that's the thing. They want to use fear. They want to scare you from doing what's what the Lord would have you to do. Don't be afraid of these devils, brethren. Yeah. They could go to the system and for the most part, yeah, the system would be on their side. But it's, hey, hey, let me tell you about how strong our Lord is, huh? Okay. 15 and 16, skip a little. Okay. So the wall was finished. In the twenty and fifth day of the month, Eliu, in fifty and two days. And it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathen that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Acts 5. Acts 5. Again. Acts 5. See how we did that? Acts 5, verses 34 
on verse 39. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves that ye what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. After this man, here's the Maccabee thing, rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing. There in scripture is the reference unto the Maccabean revolt. Okay? And drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Came to nothing. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men. And let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But. But. That's a big but, huh? If it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. See, your little G God of this world, you'll be granted a, a couple of victories here and there. But they're short lived. And of course, the wall was built and they were put to shame. You saw that in Ezra and in Nehemiah, where they used their manipulation, their psychological tactics and whatnot. Okay? and threats, okay? Their psychological manipulation that they attempted. They, it all came to nothing, why? Why? They tried to use the system, threats of using the system. They even used the system and got a victory, but ultimately they lost. This is your time now. Like one of your prophets, Joel Osteen, says, your best life now. Light it up, buddy. Belt your way to your chadez. Because this is your time. This is your hour in the power of darkness. And once we get redeemed, hey, it is going to be all yours. You think. Daniel. Oh, Daniel. Here, here's, here, here, here one, here's one that's like, some of you who are versed in scripture must have been uh, like, why aren't you going to Daniel? Would you watch any of these videos, these are, uh, <laughs> you have to dedicate some time to these. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 15. Here's a really good example of this. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidences, presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. You know, front men. You know, they go to the king, and if something goes wrong, they can't blame the king. Uh, what is it, plausible deniability, I think, that's, that they, the CIA Catholics in action came up with, right? But whatever. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Okay? A Hebrew in, the, in this uh, Gentile uh, heathen nation, being put into a place of prominence. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. 
but they could not. But they could find none occasion or fault because he did everything lawfully as he was uh, supposed to. A great example for us of the saints. You walk according to the law, do what's uh, according to the law. They can't find any fault against you. But what do they do? Let's keep reading. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Ah. And here, and here we go. Then these, then these presidents and princes assembled themselves, assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Mwah, 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 mwah. All the presidents of the kingdom, governors, and the princes, the counselors, and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man, that's capital G God there, by the way, for 30 days, save of thee, O king, mwah, 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 mwah. Get them buttocks up and pucker up, buddy, right? Yeah. He shall be cast into the den of lions. Oh, there, you talk about brown nosing. Yeah, pucker it up, buttercup. Play in the system. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. And King Darius, he, he didn't know what was going on. He's like, no, oh, that's okay, well, fine, why not? Okay, yeah, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, thanks, yeah, th th get away from me, but, that, okay, thanks, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. okay, thank you, very sweet of you, very sweet, you didn't have to smooch like that, you disgust me. He didn't say that. <laughs> I just, but anyway, he's like, you know, King Darius. Say, wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. He didn't know what was coming to the defense of King Darius. Now, when Daniel knew the writing was signed, what's the first thing he did? He went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. We ought to obey God rather than men. See, when the government steps in and starts to tell you about how you can and cannot serve the Lord, and how you can and cannot adhere to his principles. Then these men assembled. Oh yeah. The trap was sprung, wasn't it? And found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king Concerning the king's decree. What well, disgusting type of people. And these type of people, these Christians, do this virtually same thing. They don't come up with these decrees, but they're, they're brum, 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 to the, the higher powers, the prince of the powers of the air. Disgusting. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Uh, hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? King oblivious up to this point still. The king answered and said, Yeah, I think it's true. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not even. He's like, Yeah. Okay. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, that Daniel, that Hebrew, that Jew, 
that servant of the living God. Which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Now, King Darius, it's like, oh boy. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Some people will say, well, he's the king. Why couldn't he do that? Why couldn't he just, uh, say, tear it up? Well, then how would anyone take him seriously? Okay? He had to abide by his own principles that he set forth. Else, he would, number one, be a true hypocrite. And the people's like, well... I guess everything holds but except for the king and himself, right? He had no choice. But that verse 14, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. You know, sometimes us saints, we, we beat ourselves up quite unmercifully, right? I can only imagine King Darius. I can't believe I fell for this. Now, King Darius, a man like you and I, why he didn't kill them three, them three, excuse me, why he didn't kill them guys right then and there, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I must admit, being found out that I was made a horse's rear end like that, I would have been like, displeased, but it's like, You guys. But, anyway. <laughs> right? Right? I'm not saying I would have done it. But I sure would have understand if King Darius right then is like, you, you guys dead. But, let's continue. Then these men assembled unto the king. And said unto the king, look at this. They're rubbing in the, his own decrees in his own face. Okay? Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed, not even by the king himself. Like, wow. They used the system. They got a temporary victory because Daniel went into the den of lions, right? Yes, he did. 21 under verse 24. Then said Dan, and then the king Darius, he, he's a basket case. He's like, I can't believe this. He, he, his night, his sleep is taken away. He fasts. You know, he's, he's all, he's broken up. And rightfully so. Daniel was a good servant to him. Daniel was a righteous man. But see, they found fault with him and the father. His God, our God. That's what they are doing. And that's what all these Christians that like to use these systems to attack the body of Christ are doing the same thing. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And that's true. That's true. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found in him because he believed in his God. Because he did nothing wrong. But see, they used the system to get this law in that's saying that no man could pray to God except to Darius. You couldn't pray to anyone but except to King Darius. Oh, I, I reckon that something like that will be coming in the future for you who get left behind, I'm sure. Verse 24. Okay? Verse 24. And the king commanded, and they 
brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them and break their, all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. So they weren't even lowered when the lions are like, ah! So see, they got a temporary victory for one night. But God upended it. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So you see again, these people who used the system to be devious, the end justifies the means, right? Yeah, backfire. John. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Verses 4 on to verse 15. John chapter 19, verses 4 on to verse 15. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. They, the Jews couldn't crucify him. They could. So what do they do? The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die. Because he made himself the son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Read Isaiah chapter 53. Okay. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath, hath the greatest sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, Doesn't this sound familiar with what we just read? If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard the, that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Like I said, Read Isaiah 50. Isaiah 53. See, they thought they were getting rid of 
They thought they were getting rid of God. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Dumb means not being able to speak. Okay? He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he, was, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he, had done, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous service ju servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. transgressors. Who was on the cross? Who was on the cross? Hmm? Sorry, writing things down, okay? So, the Jews used the system to crucify Jesus Christ. But it was prophesied. And what happened as a result of that? 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 on verse 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Definition of the gospel. And of course the blood shed on the cross. Okay, it is finished. Backfire. They used the system to crucify their king. But it was prophesied that he was going to do that. Because he was as a lamb. And when he come back, He's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's why you, some of you Christians, when you read the red words and like the Sermon on the Mount, beautiful, great instruction in righteousness, not doctrine for us today. And they read the red words in Revelation, they get horrified. Yeah, number one, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Number two, he came first as the lamb, he's coming back as the lion. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Okay? We're not done. Revelation chapter 17. We're getting there. We're getting there. Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. 
I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. We're going to be reading on to verse 6. Okay? Um, this is talking about Roman Catholicism. Okay? Uh, there are devils out there who tell you that America... <laughs> anybody, people, listen to me. Anybody who tells you that Mystery Babylon is other than Roman Catholicism, they are either ignorant or serving the Vatican. And I will probably lay you odds, it's more of the latter, serving the Vatican. This is talking about Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. Okay? That is Mystery Babylon. Rome. Okay? All right. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, having beast full of names of blasphemy having seven hen heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, Rome is mystery Babylon. That beast is signifying Satan. Rome is Satan's church. Okay? But, when you read verses 15 on to verse 18 now, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Again, people are not, all nations are not meeting with smoking Joe. All nations are not meeting with the head rabbi. No, all nations eventually end up at Rome to meet the Pope. Okay? Mystery Babylon is Rome. Anyone tells you otherwise, they are ig either ignorant or an infiltrator, servant of the Vatican. And more likely than not, they're a servant of the Vatican. Okay? Babes can make that mistake. But if you're a babe and you make it this far uh, in the description box, uh, Rome is Mystery Babylon. Don't let no dilapidated old senile farts try to tell you otherwise. Okay? And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Yes, the whore, Rome, will eventually be destroyed, and those who, you know, you know, with the man, that man of sin, the son of perdition, Rome is eventually going to be destroyed. They will hate Rome. Yes. For God hath put... Okay. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. Oh, wait. wait well, okay. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. By that time when that man of sin, the son of perdition, comes around, he's going to be like, you, you have made a mockery of everything, blah, blah, blah. I am... Okay, and he's going to have the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay, and he's going to denounce, down, denounce Catholicism. Okay. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. In Rome, Satan's church, 
which is eventually going to be betrayed by Satan himself. That's the, that's the irony of this all. Rome, which is Satan's church, is going to, by Satan, be destroyed. Now, you know, God's going to destroy Rome. We're going to read that. But is going to be betrayed by Satan himself. You Catholics have, a, have your number. Wow. Wow. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 8. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich, through her, through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Okay? How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. The ultimate destruction of Rome. Satan is going to betray Rome and God is going to destroy her. You, you, you Catholics, you Jesuits, you, you wicked coadjutors, you Christians, uh, infiltrators, working for the Vatican. Wow. Revelation 19, verse 19 on verse 20. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, our Lord Jesus Christ, and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So Rome using the system. The Antichrist system. There is a, sense, a system that is Antichrist. Absolutely. That man of sin. The son of perdition. Okay. The Antichrist by the way. Does not appear in scripture. Okay. The definitive article, Antichrist, does not appear in Scripture. He is that man of sin, the son of perdition, or the abomination of desolation. There is a, that spirit of Antichrist, and there is a system of Antichrist. Absolutely. There is a system. But that man of sin, the son of perdition, which everyone erroneously refers to as the Antichrist, he is Antichrist, okay? He is Antichrist. And Rome, that system, also is Antichrist, okay? All right? Be aware of it. There is a Antichrist system. There is one today. It's called Roman Catholicism, okay? All right? Uh, Revelation 20. Just one verse, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. There, there's your trinity. The trinity, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. 
the, uh, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet, which will be on the earth during the time he takes his trouble. It'll be Satan. Yeah. So, Rome, the mother of harlots, which is Antichrist, what happens to them? Sitting on the beast. That very Antichrist system will denounce the whore and give all its power unto that man of sin, the son of perdition. who at that time Satan is going to be indwelling. So Satan will betray the church, his church that has served him for centuries, just like that. And then God will destroy her. Yeah. This is a warning to those of you who now there are legitimate reasons yes we are addressing for those who will use the system for evil ends and not righteously Isaiah 40 verses 21 on to verse 31 have ye not known have ye not heard that hath it not been told you from the beginning have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will ye liken me, or who shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number? He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. See, one too many of these Christians. Again, I'm not saying to saints that if there's a legitimate thing to where you have to go to the law, not to do that. I'm not saying that. I never have been. What we are talking about are those who go to the law and abuse it and misuse it and manipulate it in a vile fashion. All the while claiming to be Christian. Psalm 15. Verses 18 on to verse 23. When thou sawest the thief, you who manipulate the system, the end justifies the means. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thief and a robber climb up some other way. They boot the door out of the way. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Why? Because the end justifies the means, right? Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. 
thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Here it is. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. That's the thing. So many of these Christians will take God and make them on their own level, and maybe even a little lower. And who are you going to liken God unto? See, a lot of these devils who use the system to manipulate and to abuse and to put forth their satanic ends, they're likening man unto themselves. They are their own gods, just like their father and the devil. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. When you seek to use a system to meet an unscrupulous end, or to meet some covetous end of yours, fleshly, wanton thing of yours. It doesn't look good. You might get a temporary victory, but over end, you lose. Do what's right, according to the Scripture. Now again, I'm not saying if there's some kind of thing like uh, some kind of legal action that you have to take. Um, I'm not saying not to do that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But when you do it to just to seek some covetous thing, some evil end, like we have looked at, it don't look good, man. Let this also be a frightful warning to all you Christians out there who will use systems to attack the saints, the body of Christ. You'll get your little victories, but overall you lose because you are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning because no truth is in him. You run along and you go ahead and Try to make the body of Christ afraid. <coughs> you know, you don't have to be like that. But see, a lot of you, you love what your Father gives you of this world. And you love the limelight, don't you? Don't you? Because it's all about you, 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 you. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Thank you for going along uh, almost two and a half hours. But like I said, uh, this, is, uh, this was something that was really pressing. And um, thank you. Thank you to you brethren, you sisters who pray for us. We pray for so many of you. Thank you. Pray for one another. Tomorrow... The Lord is going to allow your servant to see 49 years of age. Wow. I never thought, I never thought, especially some of the stuff that's gone on this past year, I never thought I was going to live to see 49. Anyway, beg your pardon. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. See you in the next video.